We're getting ready to hook this power supply up to the radio. I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it later uh, in the next segment. But we still have to remove the uh, wire wound potentiometer. What we used to get the required resistance we needed to get uh, around four and a half volts out here. So let's see if we're still holding there at around four and a half volts. 4.47. Okay, good. So I'll go ahead and remove that. Now, we read the resistance at it, uh, earlier, and it was 173 ohms, I think it was. Let's shut it down and check it one more time. All right, again, I've got it hooked across the, uh, the two connectors, the outside one and where the jumper is. And we're reading 172.7, 173. That's good. Now we're going to go ahead and remove it and take another reading because there's a possibility it could be reading different in the circuit than it does outside of the circuit. Now what we get outside of the circuit, once it's removed, we're just going to remove one side and then go ahead and read it. That's the reading we're going to go by, not by the one that, that we're seeing now. And they may, you know, they may very well turn out to be the same. All right, I've got it disconnected. I just went ahead and just unsoldered this one wire right here off the one end. And I've got the two leads connected. Let's find out if we still have 172. Nothing on the 200 scale. Let's check the next scale. 600 and 3 ohms. <laughs> That's a whole lot of difference from 172. Well, what do we do now? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> we are going to take a 600 ohm resistor. We're going to go by what it's reading here. Remember I told you, you know, out of the circuit is what we're going to actually go by. And it went from 172 to 603. We're going to stick a, a 600 ohm resistor in there. Right there. I'm going to put it in with gator wires. And then we're going to turn this on and see what kind of voltage we get out. All right, I've got the potentiometer removed, and I have a 620 ohm resistor. That's all I have was 620. I don't have 600. And I've got it across where the potentiometer was connected. Now let's see what kind of voltage we get. And uh, by the way, I'm hooked back up here with the multimeter. I'm still looking for four and a half. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Look at that. Four and a half volts exactly with a 620 ohm resistor in there and remember this thing read 173 so what does that prove I'll tell you what that proves you're going to sometimes uh, in many cases uh, not all but you in many cases you're going to get a different resistance reading in circuit as opposed to out of circuit so you have to check them both ways I get you know a lot of people contact me sometimes they say you know, should I, should I uh, you know, remove that every resistor completely out of the chassis before I test the resistance? In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. But the bottom line is always this. When in doubt, lift one end out. I'll say it again. When in doubt, lift one end out. Okay? The resistor is now soldered in, 620 ohms. Let's do one more check. I've got it plugged in, and the multimeter is still attached. We're looking for four and a half again. Remember, 4.49. Look at that, 4.50, 4.49. Wow, huh? Okay, I think we're ready to rock and roll. We have the power supply hooked up. And we're only getting 82 and a half volts out of it. I'm not sure. It'll work, you know. I would like to see it a little bit higher. And the radio's hooked up. And this is what we're getting out of it right now. speaker's a little rattly. I may have to get in there and do a little cleaning on it, but this is low volume. I can crank it up way up there. Watch. 
I can even go higher, but I don't want to mess up my speaker. Anyway, it, you know, it wasn't uh, an immediate success. I mean, the power supply worked fine, but the radio didn't really want to cooperate. And as you can see, we have a lot of uh, gator wires there. And uh, in the next segment, I'll go through what it took to get this thing to work. And you'll also notice that the that the two bias cells are have been removed. Big problem with those. We'll cover everything it took to get it going. But right now, I'm very satisfied with the power supply, even though I'm only getting about 82 volts out of it. So the power supply works. Now all we gotta do is get it in the little gray box. This is WSM out of Nashville, by the way. This has got a good ba uh, uh, tone. It's got a two position tone switch. That's one. That's the other one. So we'll call our power supply a success. That's Rogers Mayor Greg Hines after last night's Rogers City Council meeting. All right, you can hear a slight bit of distortion there. Some of it is the, the speaker, and I think this tube might be bad, so I have another one on order. I used my uh, signal tracer and found out that half of it is not doing so good which is being fed by this uh, this transformer right here anyway the uh, we were unable to use these because of the original bias cells were what's called non-reactive meaning audio signals it, it couldn't pass through it I don't know what they were made of but audio, it kept audio signals uh, let me look at the, let me see if I can show you a little something here without being too blurry. But the audio signals would come out of the second amplifier tube through the coupling cap and then over to the grid of the driver. And, and then, you know, this bio cells are right here, which are also hooked to that same grid. And they would not allow the audio signal to go through. Well, when I changed them out to these little battery jobs, they did not have the non-reactive properties of the original bias cell so what was happening is the audio signal this is the best we can figure the audio signal was coming through the coupling cap coming down passing through the bias cells coming down across and down through the uh, the uh, the a supply or the filament supply back up through the switch and over to ground so we were losing the audio signal so when I turned on the radio nothing happened the first attempt to replace these watch batteries that were functioning as our bias cells, I went ahead and hooked up two uh, one and a half volt AA batteries in series and connected those wires, you know, across where the bias cells had been. In effect, what we were doing, I connected the negative. Let's zoom in here. I connected the negative to the control grid, and the positive came over here and connected to the secondary of the audio output transformer or the interstage audio transformer well when I heard turn on the radio bingo it came right on it came right on and uh, the reason being uh, I discussed this with Brendan he says that the let me see if I want to make sure I get this right but the internal res resistance of the batteries was giving enough bias voltage to kick start this driver tube well that was not going to hang with me. I didn't want to have these batteries in this radio. So we came up with a high value resistor, one and one and a half meg ohms, that we put from the control grid on the driver tube to ground. And that can, that uh, resistor will work in conjunction with the coupling, coupling cap and provide the negative bias that we need on the control grid. It's it's a uh, I don't want to get into the theory of this thing. I read about it and I understand it now. But it has to do with RC time constants. It has to do with the audio signal uh, working through this cap, through the, through the grid, the grid leak resistors, what it would be called, and working with the resistance inside, the internal resistance inside the tube 
that over a, after a few cycles of operation it actually turns the control grid into a negative bias which will cause the tube to operate and just to let you uh, see that it does operate with this thing I haven't soldered it in yet I'm going to do so but just to let you uh, see what I'm talking about here we just before I turn it on nothing happened now fires right up now of course there's a trade-off here you know there will be a little bit of distortion on the positive cycles of the audio and if you want to know how all that works you know there's a phase reversal inside the tube blah 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 and you know if you want to know how all that works look it up uh, grid leak resistance okay so that's it our power supply is operational however the output voltage is down to 78 volts I don't like that I'm gonna to have to change transformers this one here is too weak too wimpy so I'm going to take another one like this, I think, and buy a second one, take this one out, and sub and put put the you know one like this here. So I'll have two of these like this. Now that'll be done in the next video, and we'll see what our voltage is. And if our voltage is good, you know, up around the 90 volt range is what I want. Uh, if the voltage is good, we'll go ahead and uh, tear this whole thing down and put it in the gray box. Up in Michigan in a town called Nuego is uh, a fella named George Volema, V-O-L-L-E-M-A. He is the owner of Great Lakes Antique Phonograph. He does repairs, he has parts and accessories, he buys and sells these things. And I contacted him, he was highly recommended by everybody on the online Edison discussion board, I believe is the proper name for it. And they all recommended old George. They said he's good, he's reliable, he does you know excellent work. And you know when other people recommend someone more than you know more than one person, then yeah, you know, I stand up and I pay attention because uh, they've had experience with him. So I contacted George and I said, hey, look, you know I've got this C150. I need a reproducer for it, and I want a gold one, and I want it to have the original stylus in it. And what do you have? He said, I have a rebuilt one. He said, I'll sell you, and he gave me a price, and I'll tell you what, they don't give them away. But you have to understand, you know, these things date from around 1915, 1916. Well, of course they don't give them away. I mean, they are really old, and, you know, they're really rare. Then, of course, you have to take the time to rebuild it. you got to rebuild parts, things like that. So I, so I agreed to his price, and uh, he went ahead and sent it to me, and it came in. Now, I'm pretty sure that this unit uh, is operational. The old boy that had it before me, whoever that was... You know, he he redid the grill. He took the time to do this, and uh, everything looked really good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and let you listen to it. Now, this uh, I have a record here called "My Sweet Sweeting Waltz," I believe it is, one of Edison's Diamond Disc Records. And we're going to check out this old reproducer. So here goes. I've already wound it up, and uh, it's now turning. And this little handle right here, you lift it up, I mean, you, it, you push it down, and then that enables you to move the reproducer back and forth across the record. And when you get it where you want it, then you lift up on the handle, and it lowers the reproducer down on the record. And you have to lift it, lower it down slowly. You don't want to be lowering it down really hard and fast. You damage the record, damage the, the stylus, and all that stuff. So here we go. Not bad, huh? <laughs> now, you know, old Edison records, they, I read online where they were pretty boring stuff, and they, I think they're right. Anyway, it's the sentimental, nostalgic, you know, antique value of the entire thing, you know, our, our American heritage one more time. I think there's more than one record on there. Let's see what we've got here. Let's go ahead and raise that baby up. And some more. 
And I think there might be a second record on here. I don't think so. Well, anyway, these are long records. These things will play for sometimes four or five minutes. It's amazing. Well, that's it. Just a little update on what's going on with this. I still have a lot of work to do. The speaker, the cabinet, stuff like that. And I also have to tear out the mechanism and make sure it's really oiled well and all that. Until next time, this is John.